guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm going to be showing you the latest Surface Tango based on Android 13 and this is the initial build and the build date here is 19 September 2022 and of course this is a GF's included build. I'll show you everything of this ROM but I can definitely say this is a different kind of Android 13 ROM and the features of dark faced ROMs have been always a lot more convenient than other ROMs and here this is no different. Let me show you the about section quickly. This is how it looks like we still have the Dirtfist logo up top and we have the platform version showing as Android 13. You will see the Android 13's easter egg and if you keep tapping on it you will get all these emojis. Looks beautiful I would say. Let me go back. We have the Dirtfist version right here. Again Tango 18 September 2022 here it shows but it's actually released on 19 September so yeah. And the maintainer is Anurag Bhomik so huge thanks to the developer for this amazing ROM and in here in the security patch section you can see we have the latest security patch of September 5th 2022 and the stock kernel here is the Soviet star kernel and the AC Linux series shows as enforcing right out of the box. In the system panel this is how it looks like we have the language input and the pop-up camera settings of course we do have the camera calibration so you can use the camera calibration for the motorized front camera and we have the pop-up camera sound effects customization and the front camera days dialogue and led stuff let me go to the gesture and motion and in the settings of it we get the swipe to invoke assistant and if you scroll down more we are already getting the pill length customization and we have the back gesture animation over here and the swipe to invoke assistant is also working perfectly fine we also get the two button and three button navigation one handed mode should be working perfectly fine we have the swipe to screenshot that too is working great we have the share edit delete and the capture more feature and if you want to edit it even more let me show you you get the google markup kind of thing from where you can mark anything that you are willing to so yep <laughs> you can mark whatever you want let me just delete the screenshot we have the quick pull down and we have the brightness control so sliding a finger on the status bar will increase or decrease the brightness we also have the volume rocker wake the playback control and the keyboard cursor control then we have the press and hold power button then we have the quickly open camera let me go back from here and in the developer options you will get that default usb configuration you can set it to file transfer if you want in the system there is no system updater as of right now i don't know why and of course if you are willing to flash this from the flashing guide will be linked in the description box below you should not worry about it this is how the home screen looks like and to the left of it we get the google's discover page and in here if you swipe up on the home screen you will get the app drawer swiping down will get you to the quick setting panel now in here one thing to note that in the light theme the quick setting panel stays light this is what i like and if you enable the dark theme it will turn dark totally and if you're looking at this clock widget yes the android 13 clock widgets and stuff are working totally fine and if you're looking at the animation yes the animations are working great but let me show you the battery widget if you go into the settings and search for battery in here if you expand it and hold it just like this let's just put it over here so yeah even in this android 13 rom the battery widget is not working i don't know why maybe it's not working for except pixel any other devices but not really sure in android 13 on k20 pro i do not think that in any rom this battery widget is working as of right now that's how it is except for that everything is working fine by the way if you are wondering about the stock launcher let me show you this is a derp launcher present by default here and the good thing is it actually has the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen so as you can see double tap gesture is there the google search bar option is there and we also get the lock layout so i have to access google app and stuff and we have the suggestion disabling option the show lens option i enabled that and we also have the themed icons then the add app icons to the home screen the new icons and we have the show icon label in the drawer or desktop notification dots etc all of these things are there but the good thing is again double tap to sleep in the blank area if you double tap the phone will go to sleep and the double tap to wake is also working perfectly fine but one thing that i have to mention that there is no screen of fod so even if i tap over here it doesn't do anything i have to wake up the screen first if i have the always on display disabled all right so always on display i just toggle it on right now let me show you if i just double tap on the series bar and as you can see right now it is working fine even in the blank area on the home screen this is how the always on display looks the always on display working perfectly fine and if i tap the fingerprint scanner okay so i have to wake up the screen so yeah this is how it is and yes the fingerprint scanner is working fine you should not worry about it and if you are wondering about the animation just notice it up close so yeah the animation of unlocking just looks beautiful and it unlocks 100 percent of the time no issues whatsoever now talking about the quick setting panel this is how it looks like you can edit and add even more toggles if you want from here you can see the other toggles that we have 
but I already have added a lot of toggles. Let me show you. We have the internet toggle and the animation of it looks just beautiful. And we have the Bluetooth toggle right there. And it shows the Bluetooth battery percentage even on the series bar. You should not worry about that. The flashlight option is there. Dark theme is there. And the auto rotate, night light, hotspot, AR plane mode. The nearby share, the screen recording is also there. You can record the device audio and microphone audio at the same time. We have all these other features for the screen recorder as well. Then we have the home controls, the Google home controls, the always on display, you can also toggle for charge. Heads up battery saver, do not disturb data saver, everything is there, the extra dim feature is there. The reboot toggle you will also get over here and we have the high brightness mode or the ambient kind of mode. So if you enable this, just notice how bright the display gets. This is the outdoor bright sun mode and yes, the DC dimming is there, it is working perfectly fine. But with nightlight, the DC dimming will go bonkers. But if you don't use night light, the DC dimming should be working perfectly fine. And yes, in the quick setting panel, we are getting the brightness slider right here because I have customized it that way. We have these app usage in the background and in the settings, you can go from right here and the power menu appears just like this. Just notice animation, it looks great again. And yes, we do have the advanced reboot. You can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here. In the drop space, we get the customizations and in here we have the status bar settings at first. So I'll show you the customizations panel right now. But if you want to skip this part, you can skip it with the timestamps. And in here we have the battery settings on top. And yes, there is three battery kind of modes like icon portrait, circle and text. That's it. It is an initial build. So we do not have much things. In the battery percentage, we have the next to the icon battery percentage. Let me go back. We have the clock and date customization. The clock position you can change to center, left or right. You can enable the AM PM style clock seconds. But yes, there is no date customization as of right now. And we have the status bar items. In here, you can enable the headset, Bluetooth, etc. icons. We have the traffic indicators. And in here, we have the MISC settings as well. You will get the notification count, the show data disabled icon, the 4G icon and the small mobile data type icon. Let me go to the quick setting panel customization. In here, we get the reticker. Then we have the require unlocking to use sensitive tiles customization. Then we have the brightness slider position. You can also choose it to top or bottom. Then we have the show brightness slider in quick, quick setting panel. And we have the animation style, the quick setting for a text, the warnings and the vibrate on toggle touch and the interpolator kind of animations. You can customize. To the lock screen, we have the lock screen UI customization. We also get the lock screen charging info already. That's great. We have the media cover art kind of customizations. And we have the system settings where you get the headline and body font customization. And in here, we of course have the big neutral titling and we have the man rope and we have the nothing dot font. So yes, nothing font and stuff is there. OnePlus Lance is there. The pixel font, etc. options are there. But let me tell you in the lock screen, for some reason in Android 13, the nothing font does not get applied. I don't know why it's happening. But here, let me actually show you if I enable the nothing font in the always on display. I mean, it doesn't get applied in the clock. But if you're noticing on this date, it has applied already. It's monster at one. Even with this one, as you can see, we have the clock like this, but font actually applied to the date. So that's how it is for Android 13, I guess. But in Android 12 L, you can get the clock font to actually in the nothing font and stuff if you want. In the icon pack settings, we have the default, accurate, circular, etc. kind of icons. Let me go back. We have the Wi-Fi icon styles and you can set it to stroke, sneaky, etc. options. We have the signal icon styles as well. And just notice how many signal icon styles are there. We have this iOS, mini, pills, etc. options. So yeah, plethora of options for the signal icons. Then we have the icon shapes as well. So these are the customizations that you will get in the Dirtface ROM based on Android 13 as of right now for the K20 Pro. Let's just jump into the battery settings and in here this is how it looks. We have the battery percentage right there. Battery usage you can see and we have the battery charging light. Then we also get the battery optimization kind of thing. You can optimize per app's battery and we have the battery temperature on the bottom. But yes, there is no battery charging cycle seeing option as of right now. I have got about 7 hours and 14 minutes of screen on time. But let me remind you guys that I have replaced the battery. This is a brand new original battery. That's why the battery life is actually great. And the screen off or you can see the standby and stuff. And the combined use is about 60 hours. And the standby time is just awesome, I would say. So you shouldn't worry about the battery life of this particular ROM. And if you're noticing in the health section, I have about 95% battery health left. And even the fast charging is working great for me as I have replaced the battery. But if you haven't, you might be having some fast charging issues or you might be having some screen on time issues like where you get five hours of screen on time. But otherwise, I would say if your battery's health is good, the battery life of this ROM overall will be really good. Now let me talk about the sound and vibration settings. This is how it looks. We have the media call ring, etc. volume controls. Let me scroll down. We have the vibration and haptics, the dial per tone, screen locking sound, charging sound and vibration options. Touch sound, always show icon when vibrate mode. And we have volume steps, the show volume panel on the left side. 
but app volume control is there and in the me sound enhancer we'll get sound dirax and the youth edition and stuff is there and a lot more options you do get but let me tell you the sound quality with the headphone jack and even the speakers and the bluetooth headsets were great you shouldn't worry about it and we have the hi-fi audio option the choose preset option we have the haptic feedback you can customize the intensity for it and going back and stuff it does give you the haptic feedback you should not worry about those and the clear speaker option is also there if you want to use that in case your speaker sounds muffled and stuff but let me tell you the volume panel actually looks beautiful we have this expansion option for the volume panel as well also you can switch the volume from here and this is how it looks like the animation of it just looks great and yes it is better than the android 12 l animation i guess because this is how it looks when you are switching from the speaker to the bluetooth device so yeah, this looks actually beautiful to me at least. In the display settings, this is how it looks. We have the brightness level, adaptive or auto brightness. In the live display, we have the color calibration. Let me go back from here. We have the lock screen customization. And in here, we have the show device control, control from lock devices or the Google Home, I think. And the double line clock. Then we have the always show time and info. That's for the always on display. Wake screen for notification and stuff is there. Let me go back. We have the screen timeout up to 30 minutes and there is a screen attention but i don't know how it will work the device has motorized front camera so yep and we have the dark theme the display size and text for android 13 and we have the night light the colors and we have the prevent accidental wake up that's a pocket detection the wake up on plug is also there double tap to wake the screen and to sleep that feature is also there and we have the ambient display from where you can enable the pickup option if you want so the pickup gesture whenever you keep the device on your desk that feature is actually working fine whenever you lift the device it will wake up the screen in always on display we are also getting the custom display settings there you will get the dc dimming and the high brightness mode both are working perfectly fine in the wallpapers and styles this is how it looks by the way i have been using a wallpi app a list app in the description you should not worry about that so you will get 16 colors for the wallpapers and you will get the 16 colors for the basic colors as well so in android 13 you are getting a much more colorful ui i would say and we have the dark theme the themed icons the app grid goes up to six by six and yes you do not even get the face unlock and app lock <laughs> you should not even think about those in android 13 as of right now at least and in the settings of it we are getting the power button instantly locks but there is no quick unlock but the quick unlock is actually enabled by default i guess so whenever i enter pin yes it does unlock right away you don't have to press right on that keypad kind of thing so yeah the quick unlock is working perfectly fine and if in case if you are wondering about the vaulty and stuff yes i don't have a sim card in the device but if you have a vaulty sim it should be working perfectly fine and talking about the stock camera yes the dark face comes with this graphene camera or something like that so this camera you may not like and yes the front camera and stuff if you're noticing is working fine you should not worry but yes i don't like the camera ui that much so i have installed the gcam this is the mgc kind of gcam i'll link it below in the description the front camera and stuff everything is working even in night sight mode yes there is the 0.66x or ultra wide angle lens working super fine there is the 2x telephoto lens working super fine as well in the video settings you can shoot up to 4k 60 or full hd 60 and you can even switch the mics if you want whenever you are connected to a bluetooth device so in terms of camera i recommend this one i'll link it below of course i don't know about anx anx should not be working in android 13 as of right now that's a bummer for the redmi k20 pro yes i do miss that as the nx camera is not officially supported in android 13. talking about even more basic things yes safety net passes right out of the box you should not worry about the banking apps over here banking apps should be working perfectly fine here the dm info stays as l1 here so you should not worry about the 1080p amazon prime or netflix videos talking about the overall performance yes the performance has been great i have been daily driving on this rom for the redmi k20 pro and i can say the overall performance of scrolling and stuff is great but of course this display is running at 60 hertz not 72 hertz so if you are coming from a 72 hertz rom it will feel a lot more slower or a little bit slower at actually so yeah that's how it is but overall the scrolling and stuff is perfectly fine in play store as well it is working fine and switching between apps is not a problem over here and if you want to look at the like split top and stuff yes you can go into the app recents and you can go into the split top mode that should be working great you can even switch the apps if you want just like this and all these features are working great of android 13 and you can see the recent panel this is how it looks you can have the google lens option then the clear option over here so you can clear all the apps from memory just like this with one click and here are the android 10 geekbench score on this particular build with a cpu stress test so that you can get an idea about the performance of this ROM. So if you're wondering about the games like Newstead and stuff, yes, the Newstead will work, but you need to make sure that you have the USB debugging turned off in the developer settings. 
If you do not do that, it may not work. So that's been it guys about the Redmi K20 Pro's dirt face ROM based on Android 13 and I feel this is still one of the best Android 13 ROMs that you can flash. Yes, there is the Evolution X ROM and stuff which are already a lot more baked than this one. But if you want that double tap to sleep and stuff anywhere in the home screen, the flawless experience, this is the one you should go for if you really are looking for those kind of features. That's what I think. Let me know in the comments what do you guys think and subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. Please share this video with your friends if you want them to know about the latest dirt face ROM based on Android 13 on the Redmi K20 Pro. This is Tito signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.